Today we're gonna have a little fun. We are hunting for Hunga Savanna with the smallest possible weapons, which it turns out requires a lot of weapons. We have six different guns here. I'm not gonna go over everything right now. We'll kind of go through what we need for each species as we encounter them. But suffice it to say, this should be very interesting. Taking on some of the biggest animals in the game with some pretty underpowered weapons. So, as we've got a Gems book out here, we're gonna start with the 6.5. Basically, the way that I determine the smallest possible weapon is by the maximum class rating. Gonna try to get a hard shot there. Unsurprising. What the heck was that? Unsurprisingly, I don't think we got a hard shot, but we might have gotten Spinal Cord or something on the follow-up. Anyway, when we go into our inventory, we'll look at the 6.5 rounds, which of course we have a ton of ammo here, but it goes from classes 4 to 8. There are a bunch of 4 to 8 weapons, obviously, in the Hunter Call of the Wild, but I perceive the 6.5 to be the weakest one. So that's essentially how the weapons get chosen. And there's going to be another interesting side to this. Hunting things like lions and Cape Buffalo with the 4570 should already be fun. But about two weeks ago, I hosted for Hunga Multiplayer and left the game up for like 12 hours. So I think there's going to be a lot of new stuff on this map. As for our shots, no, we did hit hard. It really hadn't even started to drop yet. And then it kind of turned. And we got another absurd shot, double lung, liver, stomach. I highly doubt we'll do that again with the 6.5, but you kind of did see the difference in that initial heart shot. It, like, the health hadn't even gone down by the time we pulled the trigger for the second shot. Had we used the 300, a very typical Gensbuck weapon, it would have obviously insta-dropped. Now, despite all the weapons we're carrying today, we still don't have enough coverage to actually get Springbuck with the smallest possible weapon. We don't have anything on us for that at the moment, but we'll switch it up by the end of the hunt. What I'm thinking we're gonna do is try to get one of these Jackal with the 22H and maybe trade that out for a traditional bow and the 350 grain arrows. Those are the only ammunition in the game that maxes at class three. So I'm gonna try to get this. Second shot for good measure, that's definitely gonna be a lethal hit. And we've got some rabbits running around. We could try to get one of those. We have the 22 pistol for that. So it's kind of far. I mean, worth a try. We only hit a mile too low. That's probably going to have to wait for something that gets a little bit closer. But if there is one species that I just don't predict that we're going to hunt very much today, it probably is Jackal. So I think it's good to get one with the 22 age and trade that out for a traditional bow, which... I think that's going to be interesting in and of itself trying to get a spring buck with that and therefore probably good to do it now so we have as much time as possible to get an opportunity and get something lined up. Now when it comes to Wildebeest, our class 6 animal here, we've got the 243 pistol and generally when it's going to come down to rifle versus handgun, we'll go with the handgun kind of with the assumption that it's less powerful, but also less carry space considering the amount of weapons we got to carry today is pretty useful. So. What I like about kind of challenge hunts like this isn't just, you know, try to kill a wildebeest with a 243. I like what we did with the 6.5 earlier and the Gemsbuck. Try to get a hard shot or try to get a drop shot, which is what we're going to attempt to do with this gold double four here. I think we got that hard shot. We had to kind of hurry up because that one was about to kind of skirt in front of him. But it looked like that got through there. And yet again, you see underpowered weapon. Pretty much perfect shot. Still runs a little bit. Not too bad though, that was heart and left lung in fact, so even the addition of the left lung still couldn't drop it in its tracks. 35.5 non-scoring gold, and the gold fur type to go along with it. And hopefully if we keep on moving up through here, it is almost Cape Buffalo drink time. So we might kind of scoot down here to the coast, and maybe see if we can find some Cape Buffalo. On the way down there we could see Warthog. I still think we need to get a scrub hair at some point. Kudu could be in the area, so lots of stuff we haven't taken out yet. So finally, we get to take a look at our Class 9 weapon today. We've got a Cape Buffalo out here. There's actually another one just out ahead of them, but it looks like he's just getting into his zone. So I think with the 4570, attempting like a heart shot or a drop shot probably isn't going to be a thing. Brain shot, maybe, but I want to just first see if we can actually get a decent lung hit. It is tough to get a frontal hard shot on a Cape Buffalo. So to start with, we'll go for the lungs and then maybe test a couple of things after that. That guy back there, is he just far enough away to not hear this? He won't actually spook, he should hear it. So let's see. 
leg kind of forward, give us a little extra room to get into the chest cavity. And it's going to take some time for him to drop if we did in fact get a lung. So we're just going to keep an eye on that. And I'm not seeing promising results. Now, generally speaking, the easiest thing to do to get a lung shot on a Cape Buffalo is go for that kind of lower shot, which is what we did. And it didn't seem to work. And very clearly, that's not going to get it. That blood is not looking promising. So, the next question is, do we just try that again, or do we go for a frontal angle on this one? I think maybe we sneak in a little bit closer, see if we can get like a, I don't know, 40 meter shot, and just make sure we can get along. I, I would like to kind of take a look at what the penetration looks like in the harvest screen, and sort of go from there, but I definitely don't expect to be getting any hard shots, but... Maybe just the perfect scenario could happen. I'm gonna say 50 meters should be fine. We can zero for that range. Let's see if we can do this. We're gonna go head up so we have the most room into that chest cavity. Right in the crease. And if that doesn't get along, I just frankly don't know what will. I am considering maybe getting him again. Now that definitely worked. So it could have been range, could have been shot placement, but it's doable. And let's take a look at what the actual penetration is because if it looks like we could get the heart from a frontal angle, that is kind of the entire point here. And he didn't go far, by the way. You can see right down there is where he was standing by the tent. Ended up with just right lung. That would have got the heart. Like, look how far through that punched. It's almost like if we can flip him around here, we can't get him quite how I want. That's close enough. It's almost dead center. You can see where the spine runs through. Not bad. You can imagine that bullet hitting, you know, in the exact right spot. Maybe if you're down below the buffalo a little bit so you don't have to go through as much neck flesh, it could be done. There's some over here. We're about to find out if we can do it. So we know 50 meters can be done. And I mentioned shooting in an upward trajectory. So we're actually going to scoot down here basically to the water's edge as much as we can anyway. Because he just went alert. We're going to see if we can land this in the heart. No way. <laughs> I just didn't think that was going to happen. Now here's the thing. I know that can be done with the 7 mil. We've done it many times with the 7 mil. The 4570 and the 7 mil have the same penetration stat of 40. I just kind of perceived the 4570 to be worse, and frankly, maybe that's an incorrect perception. Now, had this been our lung shot and the bullet cam kind of bugged out like this, I would have never even attempted it. But we know what actually happened. It got at least two here, and we just managed to drop a Cape Buffalo in his tracks. That's the first time we've made a hard shot today with one of these underpowered weapons where the animal actually dropped and didn't take a couple of steps. Not bad. So finally, we've got our chance to try to take a spring buck with the longbow. And I just want to clarify something as we try to call it in a little bit closer, and I think we're going to need it to be closer. Basically what we're doing is attempting to take an 80-ish pound animal with arrows that are meant for rabbits, ducks, and stuff like that. They're completely ethical to take class one animals. And it's actually got a lower penetration stat than that of the truncated 22 ammo, so I think it's safe to say we're not shooting through any front shoulders here. We need a broadside shot, and I think that could be easier said than done. Stand there, 15 meters. I mean, maybe if it just kind of comes out of there, it'll turn. But if it trots right at us, we got to stay 100% ready because it could happen really fast at that range. The problem is, it's just standing there and I don't know why I wonder if we kind of like sneak out of here a little bit if that alerts it it's kind of attentive in moving now the thing is we're almost gonna have to shoot like right dead center in the chest I think we got a vital and that'll be good enough we had to basically shoot between the the front shoulders because I think if we hit either shoulder blade or leg bones for that matter it just wasn't getting there really curious to see what that looks like, but a long shot in that thing is running for a long time. Despite that, still managed to find him. That shot actually looks okay there. I'm curious what the harvest screen actually shows. Right lung, and yeah, that is a very different story. We're a little higher than I wanted to be, but still stayed just inside of that shoulder. And I think that's the whole reason we actually hit the lung. Like that barely even got there. And I just want to show what I was talking about too. If we go to the 22 truncated ammo, 17 penetration, the 350 grain arrows have 15 penetration. It just, I don't think it was happening if we hit that leg. And there was a kudu that called, and I think that might be the one weapon we actually haven't gotten to fire yet. That being the 45 air rifle, 
That is the smallest possible class 4 weapon. If there is a Kudu down there, maybe we can make use of it? So not exactly impressive, but maybe we can quickly get this shot lined up. I think he went to Alarm there. I'm not sure if that's going to be back in lungs or maybe liver. It's bringing him down good and quickly. This is a weapon for as low animal classes as it's ethical for, 2 to 4, that I've been generally impressed with any time we've used it. So not too surprised to see a good lung shot there. And even though it's just a level 2, nice to actually get through, I think now, the entirety of our loadout. I know we haven't killed anything with the 22, but we at least tried. But as we've now taken an animal with, I think, six different weapons and introduced seven, that was stomach liver too, we kind of lucked out. There is one final kind of challenge remaining, I would say it's not as difficult as the Cape Buffalo Heart Shot, and that is coming up to their drink zones right now. I really want to try to get a lion with a Heart Shot with the 4570. And unfortunately, I'm not sure where that guy was hiding. But the first line we encounter is in the fleeing state. Although he's standing still, eventually he will move. So we're going to try it broadside. Didn't quite get into the heart. I could imagine that being a lung shot. And I mean, we might even get another crack out of here. Well, brain works just as well. Not sure if we just hit the leg and couldn't punch through the heart or what actually happened there. We'll get another chance, I'm sure, at another lion at this lake. It is absolutely loaded with lions and lion drink zones, but not bad getting a mythical. If there's one thing I mentioned leaving this multiplayer server open for a long time, I imagine lions were heavily hunted. I think someone shot a diamond lion on the server, actually, so probably not a bad thing to actually go and check. So it's going to be a little farther than I want, but we've alerted this one nearly 200 meters away, and if he'll kind of turn and face us when alert... Maybe we can go for that shot. We can kind of sneak a little closer as we wait. Now the big question is, can we get him to actually turn and face us and give us a decent shot? That's not bad if he'll just stop. That is no problem. Getting that hard shot with the 4570 from the frontal angle. There is also, by the way, a pretty big 7 over there. Gonna require a decent holdover, and if he'll stay on broadside, we may try it. I know I mentioned just making long shots with these weapons isn't necessarily what we're here for, but I wouldn't mind getting the extra lion. However, I don't know that we're going to get the shot opportunity we we're looking for, and I guess it's not the worst thing to go a little easy on the hunting pressure, but that was heart, double lung, right through the center of the heart as well, and plenty of room to spare. Actually got through the back side of the heart by a bit. 45.38 for that. And obviously, the mythical over there, we completely screwed up the metal by shooting in the head. But I wonder where the first shot hit and what actually happened there. Also, turns out, it did float across. I was sure I looked over and saw it just sitting still, but it floated all the way back to where we initially shot it. And the first shot was just flesh, although... Not really the gun's fault. It was 150 meters. Maybe we just simply aimed too low, because we were way under the heart there. And then obviously, brain and upper neck on the follow-up. 47.41's a fairly low scoring mythical, but that now leaves us with only the 22 as our one weapon in the seven that we brought today without a kill. Well, not the most interesting scrub here we could have run into, just a little level one male. However, it is an opportunity to finally use the 22 pistol and I'm hoping to maybe find like a group of them or something, but at least we finally got to fire that. I did not want to claim that just yet, because that almost seemed like that might have been another scrub here, like a warning call. It could have also just been any animal fleeing call, but we'll just kind of scoot on up there and see if we can figure that out. We'll still no group of scrub here, but another level one male just hopping across there, and I think it may end up being our last kill, so uh, that would have been unfortunate. He stopped right as we were getting ready to shoot. Gotta lead him just a little bit more because he's 50 meters out, but I always enjoy these little hunts. It's fun to see you know, what some of these weapons are capable of. The 4570 hard shot on the Cape Buffalo, for instance, I had no idea that was actually going to work. The 45 air rifle did a pretty good job. Only got to use the 6.5 once. I was hoping to get more out of that, but we just didn't really encounter very many guns buck today. And this is one of the very few times that we've done one of these kind of unique loadouts or loadout challenge hunts where we didn't actually end up finding anything all that special. And I can't help but wonder, you know, what maybe would have happened if we had gone into multiplayer. But because we had the server open for so long in single player, I wanted to see what it looked like. And there's a ton still to explore here on Verhunga. 
that we didn't get to today, so we'll definitely be back here sometime in the near future looking for what all respawns occurred from that. But anyway, on that note, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.